What is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the WWE Super Showdown 2020 full show review and results for you guys, where I'm going to run through the entire Super Showdown 2020 show. It obviously started earlier today because it's in Saudi Arabia. You know, it uh, it's like eight hours behind us or seven hours or whatever the hell it is, or ahead of us, maybe. I think it's ahead. Yeah, it's ahead of us. Seven hours ahead of us or something like that. And so uh, we're just going to break down the show, guys. Usually these shows are hit or miss. They're usually really solid or decent, and then you have just, just god-awful, why'd you even watch? So we're going to run through everything and find out how the hell this show went down, running down each matchup, giving you my own personal thoughts and opinions about all of the feuds coming in, where I thought the matches will go, where we'll go from here, and what I thought of the matches themselves. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get started. I'm not going to include the pre-show where the OC did defeat the Viking Raiders in a nothing, you know, no, nothing too special. You didn't really miss anything if you missed it. I believe that's the only pre-show match, but let's go ahead and uh, in. So the main show, guys, did start off with the six-man gauntlet match for the Tawait Trophy here in Saudi for the uh, yeah, little, little gold trophy right there. It was by the interest rate. Pretty badass looking trophy, I might add. You know, uh, this matchup really doesn't really mean anything or anything, but you know, you do get a nice, cool-looking trophy, similar to the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. It's basically just an accolade to add to your resume that doesn't mean that much. So starting off the match, guys, we did have R-Truth and Lashley. Uh, Lashley beat up on Truth for a little bit, then finally Truth rolled rolls up Lashley and gets a W over Lashley, eliminating Lashley from the gauntlet match. Uh, Trashley was pretty pissed off about this, so he did take his anger out on Truth and started to beat the hell out of him on the outside. After this, guys, the next participant would be Andrade Cien Almas, so Andrade comes out there, and him and R-Truth go back and forth. Nothing too crazy, you know, nothing like that. It did look like Andrade was going to put R-Truth away, but then he gets a fluke roll-up. I didn't quite see this. I was taking care of my son, and I kind of looked away for a minute, but I did hear that he either rolled him up or he got a quick pinfall. Sort of came out of nowhere, and R-Truth takes care of Andrade Cien almost just like he takes care of Lashley. At this point, I thought my premonition was coming true. I was like, oh my god, they're literally going to let this man go all the way through this thing. So Andrade is then eliminated. Next up, guys, the next participant in this gauntlet match was going to be Eric Rowan, where his forehead sticks off camera. So basically, Eric Rowan would come straight down, sort of pull R-Truth out of the ring, and then he would proceed to hit him with the steel steps therefore eliminating himself from the matchup. This was considered a disqualification and Eric Rowan was then thrown out of the matchup, eliminated. So I was like, okay, they're just going to try to find a way to make this man our truth go all the way through this thing and ultimately win, which I was a fan of. I, I was all for that, but uh, would that come to fruition? We'll have to see. So after this, guys, the next participant in the gauntlet match was going to be the phenomenal AJ Styles. Now, AJ Styles comes out there and obviously uh, he's a big time favorite. I'm talking about the pyro for this show was crazy, man. Freaking Pyro popping off the entrances at this thing were like a damn 2000s pay-per-view. So AJ Styles comes out. He's mocking R-Truth. He's dancing on him. Eventually, he locks in the calf crusher, and he makes R-Truth tap out. So R-Truth is finally eliminated. Great showing. You know, the crowd was very hot for R-Truth. I was very proud of the man coming out there looking like an absolute baller. But ultimately, he does fail to AJ Styles and the calf crusher. So after this takes place, guys, Rey Mysterio's music plays, and so AJ Styles is in the ring just laughing, you know, sort of like, you know, waiting on him there, and, you know, his music kept playing and playing. It even played twice over. Camera cuts backstage. OC is beating the hell out of Rey Mysterio, making it where he cannot compete. So AJ Styles grabs the microphone, he gets on there, and he basically mocks Rey Mysterio, saying that by forfeit, he's going to take home the toy trophy. Referee, raise my hand, ring the damn bell. I'm the winner. So we cut backstage, guys, and we see black boots on the ground. You can see the trench coat, and then and out of nowhere, the gong hits, and the Undertaker is here, and his hat is missing just like he is on screen. The Undertaker is here, ladies and gentlemen. Big pop for Undertaker. The arena for this Saudi show was going nuts. You know, Undertaker makes his grand entrance, comes down to the ring, stares down AJ Styles. AJ Styles goes to attack him. He choke slams AJ Styles, doesn't even take off his hat or his coat, and he pins AJ Styles to win the Tawait Trophy. Now, when this first happened, I thought this was just him you know, coming out after AJ Styles had already won because Undertaker was not talked about. You know, this was supposed to be a six-man match or whatever. Rey Mysterio replaced Rusev. We thought it was just going to be Rey Mysterio was the last opponent for AJ Styles. Unless they came out and changed it, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be six-man, though. It was, like, televised as six-man. There was no mystery people or anything involved. But AJ Styles does get choke slammed, pinned, one, two, three. Undertaker wins, and he's the winner of the Tawait Trophy, and I guess we're going to get a Mania 
Cena match, I really didn't understand. I really thought that this was just going to be, you know, an attack moment setting up a Mania match. But apparently, Undertaker wins the Tawake Trophy. So there's that. That, that did Whatever you want to do with that, there it is. But this matchup uh, was just to get to this result, I guess. You know, you had some cool moments with R-Truth, you know, living, surviving round by round. Nothing too crazy over the top, but Undertaker does show up, and will we get an Undertaker AJ Styles Mania match? I guess we'll have to see, but this was uh, entertaining for what it was, even though I would have loved to have seen this match 10 plus years ago, and uh, you know, when these two were both both in their prime. You know, AJ Styles is still going strong. Undertaker, he, he looked a little bit limp diddy there, but uh, yeah, Undertaker wins the Tawake Trophy. Next up, guys, we did have the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match between the New Day taking on Morrison and Miz, and I was actually looking forward to this matchup. It was one of those matches I was looking forward to. I know all four know how to flow a match. They know how to work a match, and so this one was pretty pretty fun. I actually enjoyed this one quite a bit. You know, nothing too immaculate like TakeOver or anything like that, but it was a fun little matchup. I thought the interactions were great. The athleticism of Kofi and Morrison really tied together nicely. I love the reversals that we got from Miz and Big E in this matchup. One moment, he went for a big ending reverse into a skull crushing finale really cool near fall right there uh, just overall really fun match the end of the matchup came when Kofi was sort of draped over the ropes Morrison uh, you know the ref wasn't looking Morrison hit him in the sternum with a chair roll up by Miz and Miz and Morrison are your new Smackdown Tag Team Champions I actually predicted this in my predictions video and I agree with it I actually like this I'm excited to see where they go from here maybe we get some more epic clashes this feud's obviously not over because of the uh, you know obviously the chair attacks so we will see this carry on maybe on SmackDown or something. But for what this match was, I enjoyed it. Miz and Morrison win, so I'm all for it. Next up, guys, we did have the singles match between Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo, and this one was decent. You know, it wasn't too immaculate. I felt like both guys were kind of moving in slow motion or something like that. I think these guys are both good workers, but this one was nothing that you wouldn't find on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. Uh, Carrillo continues to lose in any matchup that's not Monday Night Raw, and just any big matchup this man is in or any pay-per-view match, it seems like he's a loser. You know, he is seen as a loser from a lot of people. He's a great in-ring worker. I like the way he looks. I like his hair cut. I like I like it, man. He's kind of he's kind of like a luchador Buddy Murphy or something, but he looks great. I think I think he's a really good talent. And Angel Garza, I'm not that high on. I think he can put on good matches, but both of them, you know, I, I don't know. I think they kind of lack in the character uh, the character aspect. However, you know what? Uh, this matchup was decent. It wasn't anything too crazy, but Angel Garza does roll up Humberto for the win, and Carrillo continues to lose match after match, so I, 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 I don't even know what to say at this point. That, that Angel Garza Garza wins. Next up, guys, we did have the Raw Tag Team Championship match, the flop side of the blue brand. We got the red brand right here with Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy taking on the Street Profits to defend their Raw Tag Team Championships. Let me center that up. What, what are we doing here? What are we running a fucking circus around here, Brad? All right, so coming into this matchup, I was expecting pretty solid things. I thought that AOP or Kevin Owens and the Viking Raiders or, or something like that would interfere in this matchup. They did not go that route, which I was very excited about because it allowed both these teams to get their stuff in, get some creative sequences, get some great stuff going, and this matchup was a fun one again. I think that the two tag team matches were the shines of the show so far uh, from this Super Showdown event. I really enjoy both of them. I like the athleticism from the Street Profits are great. I think Montez Ford is so damn good. I can't wait to see him in singles action one day. As good as he is with the Street Profits and Dawkins, I think it's still an excellent... He, he's an excellent singles competitor. Buddy Murphy continues to impress. Seth Rollins again. I love their matching gear. How you have a disciple on the side of Buddy Murphy's and then Messiah on the side of Seth Rollins. I think that's actually pretty genius. I really enjoyed their work together. I got to get the Chase variant Buddy Murphy so I can have the black version. But really fun match overall, dude. I really like the athleticism on display. It was just a little fun matchup. I thoroughly enjoyed it for what it was. At the end, Seth Rollins does hit the stomp on Dawkins while the ref is not looking on the apron. And then Buddy Murphy pins Dawkins to retain the Raw Tag Team Championships, which I'm okay with. I thought this was great. I really enjoy them as a team, so I really want to see this continue. But they do retain their Raw Tag titles, and uh, that is it for this matchup. Next up, guys, we had Mansoor taking on my boy Dolph Ziggler, and this one was pretty upsetting, you know, just because I already knew the outcome, you know. It, it, can I just say that the crowd from for, for this show thus far, besides a couple moments here and there, has been completely dead. I don't understand why these shows are always like this. I'm not sure it's just because there's so many, like, part-time sort of fans in the crowd or what the case is. But, uh, yeah, the, these crowds are usually pretty bad. Anyways, Mansoor comes out, and you guys know he's got to get his match in for 
Saudi. That's just what he does. And, you know, they got to call my boy Ziggler up to do the job for him because, uh, you know, Ziggler collects the payday and he's a great guy to just, to just job out people to. Flip that. He's a great person to job people to. But anyway, my boy comes out there. You know, they have some decent interactions, some good things here and there, but nothing too immaculate over the top. But anyways, Mansoor does win like we all knew. I just, just God in heaven, guys. Can you imagine AEW with Ziggler in it? Just, just imagine it, man. We'd have so many magical feuds. I'd love to see it, but you know what? Ziggler does lose to Mansoor. H hurts my soul, hurts my feelings, but you know what? Uh, we're just going to keep grinding away here. Ziggler's still a freaking beast, even though they don't treat him like one. But Mansoor does pick up the win, and you guys know, anytime they come to Saudi, anytime there's a Saudi show, Mansoor comes to wrestle, and he's going to win, Brad. So that's pretty much it for this one. Very upsetting. Next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match between the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar defending his WWE title versus Ricochet in a matchup I was actually quite looking forward to if they were going to give them time. Well, that's the thing, Brad. They did not give them any time. This match was over in about 60 seconds, I would say. It was German, German, German. Punches are actually just, excuse me. Ricochet went for a drop kick. Brock swatted him out of the air, beat the hell out of him with fists, hit him with like four or five Germans, hit him with the F5, game over. It was, you know what? I understand it. They're trying to build towards match. McIntyre, and, uh, you know, he defeated Kofi in, like, five seconds, so I guess they tried to, I don't know, you know, if you, if it lasted any longer than it actually did, then it would have hurt Kofi a lot. It also would have uh, possibly hurt Drew McIntyre, so I understand it, but I just, I hate that logic. Like, I, I mean, I understand logic. I, I, I love logic, obviously, in wrestling, but it, like, sucks sometimes when it comes down to stuff like this, when guys like Ricochet and smaller guys end up getting the shit into the stick just because they're small, so they get the hell beat out of them. When I know in wrestling, it's like, yeah, you got to make it believable, but at the same time, it's fun to showcase, you know, the difference in strengths. Just because you're massive doesn't mean you can always dominate a smaller guy like Rey Mysterio or Daniel Bryan or Ricochet. When they are faster than you, when they're more athletic than you, and they can fly all over the place. So, I don't know. I would have preferred like a more, I would have preferred a more, you know, substantial matchup, but I understand it. But Brock Lesnar does retain the WWE Championship. I don't think anybody really doubted that fact, but Ricochet uh, does, uh, he, he got blasted in this one, man. Next up, guys, we have the steel cage match between the big dog Roman Reigns taking on Trash Corbin in a matchup that I don't really think anybody really cared about because we've seen this, the, these two in a matchup a hundred times. We've seen them in the stipulation match at the Royal Rumble, and I thought that was a great blow-off to the feud. They wanted to continue it a little bit longer here to Saudi, and that made me, you know, I was already beyond disinterested in this feud, and this just took it a step further. I really wasn't paying much of attention. I was trying to change my son and feed my son during this matchup, so wasn't really uh, paying paying as much of attention to it. I did see where Roman Reigns did defeat Trash Corbin, thank God. But besides that, you know, Roman Reigns does pick up the win. I don't really know where we go from here. I'm sure Roman Reigns is going to headline the Elimination Chamber, probably win the Elimination Chamber to go on to WrestleMania to face The Fiend or Goldberg, depending on who wins that match. But yes, the big dog again, once again, defeats Trash Corbin here inside the steel cage. And I heard uh, Saxton say that uh, this is a blow-off to the feud, or at least he mentioned something about ending the feud. So hopefully, to God, this feud is finally over. Next up, guys, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bayley and Naomi. Coming into this matchup, I was actually pretty intrigued because, I, I you know, I kind of miss Naomi being in this championship opportunity, being in this picture right here going against Bayley. Bayley had never defeated Naomi. She's been reigning supreme, and uh, I've loved that. You know, a, a long time ago, I, I sort of mentioned how she never gets a long title reign. I always mentioned how she really needed her to retain to keep on that momentum, keep up her, you know, winning and keeping and holding on to the championship. And here in this matchup with Naomi, you know, they got cr they got chance of this is awesome. Now, I don't know about you guys, but it just kind of seemed dead to me. Like, it, it wasn't a bad matchup or whatever. It was just boring. I don't, I don't know what to say. It was just very boring. I found my Myself getting, you know, kind of sidetracked. It, it, it was what it was. But uh, they got chance of this is awesome a few times. I don't know if because of the historical value or what. But Bailey ends up like they were wearing t-shirts in the ring and she took her foot and tucked Naomi's foot inside of her t-shirt to end up winning the matchup. She used it as leverage and winning the matchup there to defeat Naomi here in Saudi. And she retains the championship. Just a boring match that Bailey wins. 
And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had The Fiend Bray Wyatt taking on Goldberg for the Blue Universal Championship right here. And Goldberg wins. Goldberg defeated The Fiend, and I actually tweeted about it a few weeks ago. I low-key hoped that this would happen, and it came to fruition, Brad. It actually came to fruition here. The Fiend got speared four times, took a jackhammer, a very weak-looking jackhammer, and just, it just, I don't know, man. It just, it kind of just embodies everything that WWE does. You know, they have this beautiful, great character in The Fiend. They ruin him at Hell in a Cell with Seth Rollins like immediately with the crazy-ass booking, and then logically later on, you have him drop it to Goldberg after four spears and a jackhammer after a nothing match. Match. Goldberg comes back every every couple years. He, he was 2017. He was Universal Champion, and he comes back three years later. It just embodies everything WWE stands for with the rinse, repeat, recycle, same feud, same thing, same champions. It's just like, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know what to say, but uh, I guess we're going to get Goldberg versus Roman Reigns and The Fiend versus John Cena. Hopefully, that's what I would like to see, and I would like to see John Cena defeat The Fiend at WrestleMania. That's what I'd like to see, uh, but you know what? The Fiend is no longer undefeated. He got destroyed by Goldberg. He really didn't even do anything but set in the mandible claw. And I don't know what to say. I really don't. But Goldberg's your new Universal Champion. I guess we'll find out tomorrow what takes place with The Fiend, John Cena, Goldberg, whatever the hell takes place. We're just going to have to find the hell out. But, uh, yeah, I, I really I really don't know, man. But that pretty much does it for my Super Showdown review, guys. I guess we're just going to have to watch SmackDown tomorrow night to find out what's next for this feud and what's next for the Universal Championship. Elimination Chambers in a week. You know, what's going to go down there? I highly doubt Goldberg's going to enter the chamber. I'm sure we'll do an uh, Elimination Chamber match probably with Cena. Cena and The Fiend and Roman. That's what I'm guessing, at least. We'll just have to see, but that is going to do it for my Super Showdown review, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you thought of it. Let me know what you thought of Super Showdown and everything down in the comment section below. I mean, I don't know what to say, man. The Fiend, the Fiend is gone, and uh, I, I don't know. I thought it would be The Fiend versus Roman. I guess they changed courses, and they're going to do The Fiend versus Cena, possibly, but I know the, that Roman is going to take on Goldberg. There's no way that it won't be Roman, but thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My name is Toys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.